we are doing special right triangles and finding the trig values ratios of special right triangles. So you should take some notes. Like I, I say that all the time. If you're a student, take some notes. Okay. <laughs> Let's do this. Math with Miss B. Math with Miss B. There's a thousand other places that you'd rather be. But you're watching Math with Miss B. So the first of the special right triangles that we will discuss is a 45, 45, 90 right triangle. So you have a right triangle. It has a 45 degree angle. 45 degree angles are common in trig. So we're going to assume that the length of a leg of a triangle, of this triangle, is going to be 1. So we're going to say A equals 1. It's an assumption. It's a given, right? So what we know is because this is an isosceles triangle, the other leg must also be one. How do I know this is an isosceles triangle, Miss B? I'm so glad you asked because if every triangle has 180 degrees, I know that one of the angles is a 90 degree angle, hence the little square in the corner. And then I know the other angle is 45 degrees, hence the 45 degrees in the corner. I add those two together, I subtract them from 180, and I'm still gonna get what? 45. So that means if those two angles are equivalent, the sides are equivalent. That's isosceles triangle theorem so I don't know if I said that right <laughs> okay so a equals 1 and then B equals 1 so both legs of the triangle are equal to 1 so that just leaves us to figure out what the hypotenuse is so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna use the Pythagorean theorem you know we love us some Pythagorean theorem over here with the triangles with the right triangles so we're gonna do 1 squared plus 1 squared equals C squared 1 squared plus 1 squared is what Two, a one squared plus uh, is two, sorry. <laughs> and then <laughs> two equals C squared. So to get C by itself, what I would do is I would take the square root of both sides. So take the square root of C squared and take the square root of two. So guess what? C equals the square root of two. Boom. So now because these are common, what ends up happening is the trig ratios are commonly used. So it's good to, if that, it's good if you are familiar with the trig ratios of a 45, 45, 90 right triangle. So evaluate the six trig functions of this 45 degree angle, given those standard values. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at our handy dandy little table. And because I'm nice like that, I left all the ratios on there so sine is opposite over hypotenuse so looking at that 45 degree angle i'm going to look at the opposite side which is one and then the hypotenuse which is square root of two and when i rationalize that answer i'm going to get two square root of two as my wonderful beautiful sine ratio okay if you don't know how to rationalize denominators go look at my introduction somebody's calling me my introduction video hold on Okay, so the cosine is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. So we are going to do, looking at the 45 degree angle, we have a 1 right next to it. So that's adjacent over hypotenuse, which is square root of 2. But when I rationalize it, I'm going to get 2 square root of 2. Is it funny that we get the same for the, top, for the sine and the cosine? No, the sine and the cosine will be the same because guess what? Them angles is the same. That's why it's isosceles. So for tangent, I have opposite over adjacent. So opposite is one, adjacent is one, one over one is one. So now what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and we are going to 
find the cosecant, secant, and cotangent, but because these are reciprocal functions, the cosecant is just sine flipped, secant is cosine flipped, cotangent is tangent flipped. So the cosecant, remember originally our sine was 1 over square root of 2, so now it's just square root of 2 over 1, which is just square root of 2. Right, secant h over a, hypotenuse over 1, so square root of 2 over 1, which is just the square root of 2. Those two will also always be the same for a 45 degree angle. And then um, for the cotangent, it's adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's 1 over 1, which is still going to be 1. Ding! That's the explanation of a 45, 45, 90 right triangle in a nutshell and its trig values. Let's talk about a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. So what we have to do is, first of all, we know that 30 degree angles and 60 degree angles are common in trig, right? And because they're common in trig, uh, it's good to be familiar with their values. But where do they come from? Like, why are they common in trig? Well, we're going to assume that we have an equilateral triangle. So this triangle that you see on my screen right now is an equilateral triangle. That's why all the purple angles are the same. Okay? And we know that if a triangle, all triangles have 180 degrees, equilateral triangles means that all the angles are equal. So 180 divided by 3 is going to give me 60 degrees. Ta-da! All of those angles are equal to 60 degrees, all the purple angles. Okay, so we're going to assume that each side of this equilateral triangle is equal to 2. Side equals 2, right? And then what we're going to do is we're going to cut the equilateral triangle in half. Shoop! And we're just going to be focused on the blue part. Okay, so if I cut the bottom in half to just the blue part, that's going to equal to 1. And if I cut that top angle in half, instead of it being 60, it's going to be 30. That's how you get a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. Ta-da! So now if I have the hypotenuse and I have a leg, I need to find the other leg by using the Pythagorean theorem. So we're going to do 1 squared plus b squared equals 2 squared. And then we're going to do 1 plus b squared equals 4. And we're going to subtract 1 from both sides. So we're going to get b squared equals 3. And then we're going to take the square root and we're going to get b equals the square root of 3. So guess what? That's my last side. Ta-da! That's where 30, 60, 90 right triangles come from. And this is why we have common, we want to, this is how we figure out the common values or ratio, trig ratios, I should say. So this is my triangle. Take note, that says evaluate the six trig functions of a 60 degree angle. The angle that they denote is the 30 degree angle. So even though it looks like I should be looking up there where the 30 degree angle is, I really need to be looking at the bottom empty angle because the bottom empty angle is the 60 degree angle. They be trying to trick y'all. I'm not trying to trick y'all. I'm trying to teach y'all the tricks so you can be the trickster. Okay, so looking at the bottom angle, we're gonna figure out the trig ratios. I took off the ratios and the, the ah. It's okay because you should know so Katoa, right? So sine, so. S-O-H, opposite over hypotenuse. O-H stands for opposite over hypotenuse. So looking at the bottom empty angle, what's the opposite of it is square root of 3, and the hypotenuse is 2. So my sine is going to be square root of 3 over 2. Boom! My cosine, ka, so ka. Ka is adjacent over hypotenuse. A-H, ka adjacent over hypotenuse. So looking at the bottom empty angle, which is our 60 degree angle, not the 30 degree, because the problem says 60 degree, we're gonna do adjacent, which is one, over hypotenuse, which is two, so one half is my cosine. Tangenta, tangenta, so ka toa, toa, o a, opposite over adjacent. Right? So looking at the bottom empty angle, which is a 60 degree angle, what's opposite of it? Square root of 3. Adjacent, 1. Square root of 3 over 1, which is just the square root of 3. So now finding cosecant, secant, and cotangent is really just using the reciprocals. Right? So just flipping co the sign for cosecant. And so that's going to be 2 over the square root of 3. But remember, we, don't, we need to rationalize the denominator. So when I do that, I'm going to get 2 square root of 3 over 3. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So instead of 1 over 2, it's going to be 2 over 1, which is just 2. 
And then cotangent is going to be square root of 3 over 1 flipped, so 1 over square root of 3. But we have to rationalize our denominator, so that's going to be square root of 3 over 3. Ta-da! <laughs> okay. That's the 60 degree angle. These are the trig values for the 60 degree angle. We're going to do the 30 degree angle next. And pay attention because these values are basically just going to be rearranged. So now we're doing the 30 degree angle. So we're looking at the top angle now. We're not looking at the bottom empty angle. We're looking at the top angle that says 30 degrees. Sine. So opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite is 1. Across from the 30 degree angle is 1. Opposite from it is 1. Over hypotenuse is 2. 1 half. Cosine, ka, so ka, adjacent over hypotenuse. Right next to it is square root of 3. Hypotenuse is 2. Square root of 3 over 2. Toa, toa, opposite over adjacent. Toa, opposite of the 30 degree angle is 1. Adjacent is square root of 3. 1 over square root of 3 rationalized is square root of 3 over 3. Now let's remember that cosecant, secant, and cotangent are just reciprocals. So the cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So 1 half is really going to be 2 over 1, which is just 2. Secant, the reciprocal of cosine, is the square root of 3 over 2. So that's going to be 2 over the square root of 3. But rationalized is going to be 2 square root of 3 over 3. And then finally, last, but certainly not least, we're going to do the reciprocal of square root of 3 over 3 because it's the reciprocal of tangent. So that's going to be 3 over square root of 3, but rationalized is just the square root of 3. You did good. Okay, that's the end of that lesson. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Go back through. See if you can do the problems without my help. Okay, tell somebody about the channel, your mama's friends, auntie, sisters, grandma, little cousin, tell her or him or they. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.